Today we're going to be talking about how to find the equations of the normal and oscillating planes. And in this particular problem, we've been given these parametric equations here, x equals 2 sine of 3t, y equals t, and z equals 2 cosine of 3t. And we've been asked to find the normal and oscillating planes of the curve defined by these parametric equations at the point 0, pi, negative 2. So as a reminder, I've written some equations that we're going to need. This is the equation of a plane, just the basic equation of a plane. Remember that A is the slope in the x direction, B is the slope in the y direction, and C is the slope in the z direction. We know also that we'll plug in the point 0, pi, negative 2 for x sub 0, y sub 0, and z sub 0. So we already have that. Really then, all we need to find the equation of the plane are the values for A, B, and C. And we're going to need two sets of values for A, B, and C one for the normal plane, and then another for the oscillating plane. So how are we going to find those? Well, they're going to come from the vectors that lie in these planes. So we need the normal vector. The normal vector lies within the normal plane. So if we have that normal vector, then we can take the components of that vector and plug them in for A, B, and C. And then we need a vector that lies in the oscillating plane. That's going to come from this B of T formula here. We're going to get that vector by taking the cross product of the tangent vector and the normal vector, that vector, the result, will lie in the oscillating plane so we can pull the components for a, b, and c from that vector. So we're really working backwards here. We have these formulas for the normal vector, the tangent vector, and this vector b of t here. What we want to do is start with the unit tangent vector because as you can see we're going to need this capital T of t value to plug into our unit normal vector formula right here because we have capital T prime of t. So we really have to start with this middle formula. Well in order to use this formula notice that we're going to need an equation for r of t so that we can take its derivative and find r prime of t. So we want an equation for r of t and we're going to get that by using our parametric equations that we've been given. So all we're going to do is say that r of t is equal to, we're going to transform these parametric equations into one vector equation. And each of these is just going to become the coefficient on our i, j, and k terms respectively. So we're going to say 2 sine of 3t times i plus t times j. See how we're just taking each of these and making them coefficients on i, j, and k? And then plus 2 cosine of 3t times k. And x, y, and z are always going to correspond to i, j, and k respectively. So now we have this vector equation r of t. Notice that we need though r prime of t for this unit tangent vector formula. So we're going to take the derivative and get r prime of t is equal to, and in this case we just take the derivatives of the coefficients in front of these i, j, and k values here. So the derivative of 2 sine of 3t is 6 cosine of 3t. The reason being, because we're going to use chain rule here, the derivative of sine of 3t is cosine of 3t, but remember then that we have to multiply by the derivative of this inside function 3t. Well, the derivative of 3t is just 3, so we multiply by that 3, so 2 times 3 here becomes 6, so we end up with 6 cosine of 3t, and then of course multiplied by i. The derivative of t is just 1, so we get 1j, or just j, and then the derivative of 2 cosine 3t is again here, 6 sine of 3t, but we have this negative sign out in front because remember, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we'll get negative sine of 3t, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function 3. So we're going to get plus negative 6 sine of 3t, and we're going to multiply that, of course, by k. So why don't we just distribute that negative sign and simplify this. We'll get 6 cosine 3ti plus j minus 6 sine of 3t times k. So now we have a value for the derivative of r of t, r prime of t. So we can plug that into the numerator of our unit tangent vector formula. But we're also going to need the magnitude of the derivative of r of t. The way that we're going to find that, we're going to say the magnitude of r prime of t. The way that we're going to find that is by taking the square root of the sum of the squares of each of the coefficients in this derivative, which sounds more complicated than it is. All we're going to do is take the coefficient on each of our i, j, and k terms, square it, add them all together, and put them under our square root sign. 
So six cosine of three T squared, when we square that whole quantity, we're gonna square the six here and get 36 out in front. And cosine of three T becomes cosine squared of three T. So that's the square of that coefficient, everything in front of the I term. In front of J, we just have a one, right? This is plus one J. So one squared is still one, so we get plus one. Then we're gonna to add to that the square of negative six sine of three T. Remember to include this negative sign. But of course, when we squared, it, it's gonna go away anyway. So negative six squared gives us a positive 36. And then we get sine squared of three T. So we just add those all together and we put that underneath our square root sign here. And now we need to simplify. So what we wanna do is recognize that we have cosine squared of three T and we have sine squared of three T. We can put those two terms together and then factor out a 36. So we'll get 36 times cosine squared of three T plus sine squared of three T like this. And then we have our plus one out here. So cosine squared of three T plus sine squared of three T, based on our trigonometric identity, we know that that's equal to one. So this is all just gonna cancel because one times 36 is still 36. And you can see that we end up with then the square root of 37, 36 plus one. So now you can see we have the two values we need. We have R prime of T here. We found R prime of T. And then we have the magnitude of our prime of t here in our denominator, we've got that right here. So what we can do is just divide this value here by this square root 37 value and we can get a value for the unit tangent vector, capital T of t. So we'll squeeze that down here because we're gonna need the room. So we have the unit tangent vector and basically we're just dividing this value by this one, but we really don't wanna distribute the square root of 37 across each of these terms yet. So what we'll just do is we'll bring this one over root 37 out in front and we'll multiply that by this r prime of t value that we have here. So we'll get six cosine of three t times i plus j minus six sine of three t times k like this. So really we just took this value and divided by root 37. We just pulled that root 37 out in the denominator as a fraction in front here so that we could factor it out. So now we have the unit tangent vector capital T of T and we need to use it to find the normal vector capital N of T here. Notice that to find the unit normal vector we need capital T prime of T so we need the derivative of our unit tangent vector and then we need the magnitude of the derivative of our unit tangent vector. So first let's go ahead and find the derivative. So we'll say capital T prime of T and we're just gonna take the derivative of what we found here. Well, when we take the derivative, our coefficient one over root 37 is gonna stay out in front. So we're gonna have one over root 37. And then again, here on the inside, we're just gonna take the derivative of each of our coefficients, leaving i, j, and k as they are. So the derivative of six cosine of three t, remember that the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and we have to use chain rule to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So we're gonna get negative 18 sine of three t times i. The derivative of one, the coefficient in front of our j term here, is just zero, so that's gonna go away, plus zero j is gonna become zero. And then here, the derivative of negative six sine of three t, the derivative of sine is cosine, so we'll get cosine of three t, but then we have to multiply by three, so we're gonna get minus 18 cosine of three t times k, like this. So there's the derivative of our unit tangent vector. Now we need to find the magnitude of this derivative here so that we can use it in the denominator of our unit normal vector. So we're gonna say the magnitude of capital T prime of T like this. And again, we're gonna use this square root formula that we used here. So we're gonna say the square root, we need to include this one over root 37. So we'll do one over root 37. We need to square that because it would have been distributed across these components. So we need to include it underneath our square root sign here. But then we're gonna multiply that by the square of each of these coefficients. So negative 18 squared here is gonna give us a positive 324. Sine of three T, that whole value squared is sine squared of three T. And then again here, we square the coefficient on this k value here, so we'll get plus 324 cosine squared of 3t. And we'll close that off, and this is all underneath our square root sign. 
So when we simplify here, 1 over root 37, when we square that, we're going to get 1 over 37. So we have 1 over 37. And then we're going to factor out a 324 here. So we factor out a 324, and we're multiplying by sine squared 3t plus cosine squared of 3t. And as you can see, we looked at that before, we know that that value becomes 1, right? This is just 1 based on our trigonometric identity. So 324 times 1 just gives us 324. We know that the square root of 324 is 18. So what we're going to end up with here is just 18 over root 37 as the magnitude of the derivative of our unit tangent vector. So notice now again our formula over here for the unit normal vector. We have this derivative of the unit tangent vector, and we found that value right here. And then we have the magnitude of the derivative, which we found right here. So we just need to divide this orange value by this blue value. Okay, so that's going to give us the unit normal vector. So let's go ahead and write it here. We have the unit normal vector. Now, when we divide this orange value here by this 18 over root 37, what we're actually going to do, since we're dividing by this fraction, is we're going to multiply by the inverse. So we're going to get this 1 over root 37 coefficient, 1 over root 37. Instead of dividing by this fraction, we're going to multiply by its inverse. So we're going to flip it upside down and get root 37 over 18. These, of course, will cancel and we'll be left with 1 over 18. So that's how those coefficients work out. The unit normal vector then is just 1 over 18 times the rest of this here, negative 18 sine of 3ti minus 18 cosine of 3tk, like this. Now we have an expression of our unit normal vector, but we need to simplify it further because notice that we have a negative 18 that we can factor out of this vector. We want to go ahead and actually leave the negative sign on the inside because sometimes that can mess with our coefficients, but we can pull out at least the 18. And when we do that, we'll get capital N of t is equal to, pulling out the 18, we'll get 18 over 18 in front, which will just be 1. So we'll just be left with negative sign of 3ti minus cosine of 3t times k, like this. Now, if we want to, to give ourselves some room and to simplify this a little bit further, let's go ahead and rewrite the unit tangent vector and the unit normal vector, pulling out just the components in front of i, j, and k, just the coefficients, removing the i, j, and k. So here, for our unit tangent vector, we're going to get 1 over root 37 in front like this, and we're going to pull out our coefficients. So we're going to have 6 cosine of 3t, which was in front of the i, comma 1, which was in front of the j, comma negative 6 sine of 3t. And we leave out i, j, and k, so now we just have the components. And then for the normal vector, capital N of t, we'll do the same thing here. So we have no coefficient. And then in front of the i, we have negative sine of 3t. There's no j term, so we've got 0 here. And then the coefficient in front of k here, we've got negative cosine of 3t. So now that we have the components of the unit tangent vector and the unit normal vector, we can go ahead and find the binormal vector, which we're going to find by taking the cross product of the unit tangent and unit normal vectors. So we're going to say capital B of t is going to be equal to, and in order to find our cross product, of course, we're going to need our matrix. So we're going to put i, j, and k in the first row of our matrix, and then in the second row, we're going to put the components of our unit tangent vector. We're going to leave this 1 over root 37 outside of the matrix, so we're just going to put 6 cosine of 3t here, which was the coefficient on i, 1 under j, and then negative 6 sine of 3t like this. And then in the third row, we're going to put the components of the unit normal vector. So again here, negative sine of 3t, 0, and negative cosine of 3t. And then we said we were going to leave our 1 over root 37 outside of the matrix. So we'll multiply by 1 over root 37. So now to simplify this, of course, remember that with a matrix, we're going to start with i, and we're going to take everything that's outside of the row and column that contains i, which is these four. So then we're going to multiply upper left by lower right, so 1 times negative cosine of 3t. Of course, we'll put this 1 over root 37 out in front here. But 1 times negative cosine of 3t gives us negative cosine of 3t 
minus the lower left times the upper right. So zero times negative six sine of three t is just zero. And we multiply that by i because i is outside of this row and column here. And remember too, with a matrix like this, we put a positive coefficient in front of the i, negative in front of j, and positive in front of k always. So now we're gonna subtract because we have this negative sign in front of j, everything outside of j's row and column. So we have j here. We're gonna take everything outside of the row and column containing j, which is these four here. So now we're gonna do upper left times lower right. So six cosine of three t times negative cosine of three t is gonna be a negative six cosine squared of three t. And then subtract lower left times upper right, which is gonna give us, those negative signs will cancel, a positive six sine squared of three t multiplied by j. Now we're going to add to that the coefficient in front of k and remember, everything outside of k's row and column, which will be these four here. So upper left times lower right, we can see that that's gonna be zero, minus lower left times upper right, which is gonna be negative sine of three t. So this negative sign will become a positive, those will cancel, sine of three t, multiplied by k, and we'll close our square brackets. Okay, so now we just need to simplify. We're gonna get one over root 37, negative cosine of three t minus zero. So we're just gonna have negative cosine three t like that. The coefficient here in front of j, we have six cosine squared three t minus six sine squared three t. If we look at just this part right here, these parentheses here, what we're gonna do is factor out a negative six from there. So negative six times cosine squared of three t plus sine squared of three t like this because we're factoring out a negative six so this negative becomes a positive. This is just gonna become one here. So this whole thing, everything inside these blue parentheses here becomes just negative six. But of course we have a minus right here, minus negative six, so that'll become a positive six. So we just have six as the coefficient in front of j. And then for the coefficient in front of k, we just have this sine of three t here, so sine of 3t like this, and this is our binormal vector, capital B of t. Now that we have all of this information here, we're finally ready to start building the equations of our normal and oscillating planes. What we need to do is we need to evaluate the derivative r prime of t right here. We need to evaluate this at the value of t that corresponds to our coordinate point. We also need to evaluate the binormal vector, capital B of t, at the value of t that corresponds to our coordinate point. Well, we don't know which value of t corresponds to our coordinate point, but we can find it in a couple of ways. So we just need to solve for t. Well, what we realize is that we have this parametric equation we were given here, y is equal to t. Well, if y is equal to t, and we know that we're looking at the coordinate point 0, pi, negative 2, then we know that t is equal to pi. So we're going to be evaluating at t equals pi. The other way that we can see that is by looking at our unit normal vector, capital N of t, and we see that we have this zero value here as the coefficient on the j component, or it corresponds to the y value of our coordinate point. So those two things both tell us that we're evaluating at t equals pi. If we had been given instead x equals t and y equals two sine of three t, if these two had been reversed, we would have been evaluating at t equals zero. We would have taken the x value instead of the y value. So we wanna plug t equals pi into our derivative equation here, r prime of t. When we do that, we're gonna get r prime of pi is gonna be equal to, so now notice we're plugging it in here, we're plugging it in for t. So when we plug in t equals pi, we'll get three pi here. Cosine of three pi is gonna give us negative one, and negative one times six is gonna give us negative six. So we're just gonna write our components here, negative six. When we try to plug pi into the coefficient on our j term here, well the coefficient on our j term is just one, there's no place to plug in pi, so we're gonna just take the component here, one. Then when we plug pi into the coefficient on our k term, we're gonna get three pi, sine of three pi is zero, zero times negative six just gives us zero. Now these are gonna be the values for a, b, and c for our normal plane. So our normal plane right here 
we'll find normal plane first and then oscillating. But our normal plane, we're going to take these three values for A, B, and C, and we already have here x sub 0, y sub 0, and z sub 0. So the equation of our normal plane is going to be negative 6 times x minus 0 right here, plus here for b we get 1, so we have 1 times y minus pi, which we take from our point, plus 0 here for c times z minus a negative 2, so negative 2, and we set that equal to 0. So then when we simplify, we're just going to get negative 6x plus y minus pi. This whole thing goes away because it's 0. That's going to be equal to 0. And we can easily solve this for y. So we'll get y is equal to 6x minus pi. And that right there is the equation of our normal plane. Now to find the oscillating plane, we want to plug this same value, t equals pi, into our binormal vector, capital B of t. So when we do that, we get capital B of pi is going to be equal to 1 over root 37. And again, we'll put just our components here. So plugging in pi, cosine of 3 pi is going to give us negative 1, but then we multiply by this negative sign out in front, and we get a positive 1. So 1, there's no place to plug pi in here, so we just get 6. And then plugging in pi here, we get 3 pi. Sine of 3 pi is 0, so 1, 6, 0. Now the cool thing is that we actually don't have to include this 1 over root 37 value when we plug in these values for a, b, and c into the equation of our oscillating plane. Because of course if we plugged 1 over root 37 times 1 in for a, 1 over root 37 times 6 in for b, and 1 over root 37 times 0 in for c, we just end up factoring out that 1 over root 37. We'd be able to divide it through both sides and it would disappear anyway. So if you have this coefficient, you don't even need to include it. We just really need these component values here. So then that means that our oscillating plane, the equation of our oscillating plane here, is going to be, we'll plug in 1 for a, so we're going to get 1 times x minus the x value from our coordinate point, 0, plus our b value, 6, times y minus the y value from our coordinate point, pi, and then plus our c value, 0, times z minus the z value from our coordinate point, negative 2. And we set that equal to 0. So as you can see, we're just going to get x here plus 6y minus 6 pi. This whole term goes away because it's 0. We set that equal to 0. And then to keep this simple, we'll just go ahead and add 6 pi to both sides and say x plus 6y is equal to 6 pi is the equation of our oscillating plane. So that's how you use the unit tangent, the unit normal, and the binormal vectors to find the equations of the normal and oscillating planes of a vector function.